So Zai's going to tell us his dream. All right. All right. So this happened um, almost 30 years ago. I was 18 years old, and um, I was in college, and I was having a rough time. I was actually close to being on probation. Um, and I had this dream one night that has been probably one of the most significant um, things in my life as far as continuously going back and, and remembering um, this dream and trying to figure out its significance. The dream started out, I was with um, driving in a car with three friends and uh, two are in the back seat, one is driving and I'm in the passenger seat. And we're driving up a very steep canyon, going up to a large mountain, and we're trying to get to the top. I don't know why, but that's our goal and that's what we're looking for. We're, as we're driving, we're laughing, we, uh, we're partying, and we're just having a good time, thinking life is great. And as we're going up, we see an enormous overhang of ice and snow. And it's gigantic, and it's so big that it feels as if it was if it was to collapse that it would come over the entire highway, down the canyon, and and, and cover even the city that's down below us. And as we're driving, uh, we hear a jet airplane coming. The two in the back seat turn around and look behind them, and they see a passenger jet airliner coming towards us, and it's coming straight towards us, as if to crash. And we get very nervous, and we think that we're about to die. Just then, this huge jet airliner just turns right over us, veers off to the left, and goes down and crashes into the city. And we see an, a, a large explosion. And we start laughing, thinking, wow, we almost died. Isn't that interesting? And we keep partying, and we keep driving. And as we're driving, we come around a corner, and we see a large dump truck in front of us. And this dump truck, we immediately know, does not have any brakes. And we're driving towards it, and we think we're about to crash into this dump truck. It veers off, and it flies off a cliff, and it's gone. And we start laughing yet once again. We almost died. The third time, as we're nearing this large overhang um, of snow and ice, um, we look up. And as we're approaching it, we start to feel the imminent danger that it could collapse any time and have a huge over, um, avalanche and just cover over the entire city. Just then, a chunk of ice, um, probably the size of like this table, this big round chunk of ice comes crashing through the front windshield, right in between the driver and myself, right where maybe a passenger could be sitting. And it just lands right there. Just then the car stops, and we all again start wondering what the heck just happened. We could have all been killed. Right at that point in time, um, I find myself alone in the highway. My friends are gone, the car's gone, and now there's an earthquake starting to occur. And I start thinking I just have to protect myself and run. I don't even think. And I start running down the highway. And I'm running and running and running. And I come to a farm. The lady is on the other side of her fence. She's hoeing in her garden. And I come running up because the highway comes to her property and then veers all the way around it. And I ask her if I could please cut across her property because of the imminent danger and the earthquake that's occurring and all this snow and ice that's about to fall on all of us. And she says to me, you'll have to wait a minute. I have to pray to get an answer. And she goes and kneels down and prays. And I'm thinking, okay, wait a second, what is this about? And she comes back and she says to me, the answer is no, you have to go the long way. At that point in time, I feel that there's so much imminent danger, I have to, I have to proceed. So I start running around, the answer is no, and I run all the way around her property, it's about an acre, and then I run back down the road, have to come back in to where the main um, highway was down to the freeway and I feel like I'm running forever and I feel like I can't make it I'm just exhausted and I'm not gonna make it and as I come down to the freeway cars are leaving the city and there's just this huge mass of traffic and congestion leaving everyone's leaving 
because of that huge overhang of snow and ice that was about to fall and it would cover the city. And as I get to the highway, I'm thinking, how am I going to get out of here now? And all of a sudden, I see my family's car driving up, my father's driving, and I start running towards him. He passes me, and I'm running towards the back, thinking, please stop, please stop, save me. And as I'm running, trying to grab the car, trying to touch the car, it just keeps going and going. I keep running and running, please stop, please stop. And all of a sudden, the brake lights turn on and I jump in from the back. It was like a station wagon, and like the window went down and I jumped in the back and then I woke up. Wow. <laughs> That's a pretty significant dream, I would say. And you had it 30 years ago. Uh, this is a calling dream. It's a progressive dream on your life that tells you that you have a calling. There's something that's, that you're being awakened to. You're being shown. Your father is your father, but also your father. Okay? And um, there's been, I'm just going to go out on, on, on a limb here, but quite frankly, you've been spared more times than just two from catastrophic events that could have completely taken you out. And God is actually calling to you. He's the one who is, is, has given you the dream to let you know, look, there was a season of party. There was a season of being with these friends. But quite frankly, in that time, um, and you were trying to get to a higher place, which you were probably meant to go and you are meant to go, but you're not going to get there with them. Um, and the other thing is, uh, um, as you were ascending, things started changing rapidly started changing quickly and you were aware of it and I feel that where you are right now in your life is that the window is being rolled down in the station wagon it's a family vehicle and you're being given an opportunity to jump in and you'll be spared and you'll be saved and it's playing out right now in your life and that's why you had the dream and it's not just that you're going to save others. I mean, save yourself. You're going to save others. Others are going to see it. Others are going to be in your life. They're going to be connected to you. And um, that's what this dream is. That's what this dream is. So the window's, the window's being rolled down, and it's time for you to jump into the car. Because things are being shaken. There's earthquakes happening all over and there's not a moment left to lose. And in, in your journey, had you cut through that, that farm of the little woman when she prayed and she got, it was, it was like she was praying for you and she got an answer for you. And the answer was, you must go this direction because if you cut through, you would have missed your window of opportunity. I believe that. Thank you. Wow, that's quite an interpretation. Wow. <laughs> All of us over there were like ready to stand up and start cheering. <laughs> that's phenomenal. Um, so you said earlier that you felt like you had an understanding of what the dream was. So um, I'd like to ask how you feel right now and what you believe has has been open to you relative to the conversation we had prior to your conversation with Cindy. Yeah. Well, she's keyed in on a lot of things that I believe are true um, and told me some things that I had never thought of before. You know, the station wagon, the family. My dad passed away several years ago. And so I've always wondered, well, he's not here anymore. But what she told me was that, you know, it is my father, which it's, whether it's my father that I believe in, in God, or my father that I believe in who's passed on, or just the fact that it was a station wagon and it's family that's going to save me, which, you know, I have just so connected to in the last few years with my children. I have five wonderful children. I love them all. And we, you know, we just today we've been out skiing and have a good time together. And that's what brings me the most joy in my life 
was being with my children. And I went through drug rehabilitation many years ago. And um, I've been clean and sober now for, for many years, many years. And um, that was a big struggle to get through. It was a big struggle to get past some of my friends that, as she stated, you know, to me, life was all about partying and going out and having fun. And it's almost like it's time to grow up and move on. And it's very comforting to me to hear that, you know, maybe it's time for me to really reconnect with God and, uh, and do that with and through my family. So it feels good.